lipid matrix microencapsulation is uh, is allowing for certain uh, vitamins and trace minerals and other bioactive compounds, nutraceuticals and things like that, to be embedded within a matrix uh, of, of lipid. And it's usually um, you know, medium chain fatty acids that's uh, hydrogenated. So it, it has a fairly high melting temperature and it allows uh, the, the protection of these sensitive ingredients, uh, preventing them from exposure to things that would cause degradation, but also uh, that it allows for um, better handling characteristics. Thanks for joining us today. This is another episode of the Poultry Nutrition Black Belt Podcast. I'm Kelly Wamsley, your host, and I'm joined today by Dr. Peter Furquette. Hi, Dr. Furquette. How are you doing today? I'm doing very good, Kelly. Great. Thank you for having um, having or coming with us and joining us today. So um, it's really neat opportunity for me because, of course, you've been in um, in this area of poultry nutrition for your whole career, and um, I've seen you know so many of your papers and interacted with you at so many different levels um, throughout my time and even in school and then now as a assist, uh, as a professor as well so it's really neat to to be able to talk to you about um, a lot of your life's work well it's an absolute pr- pleasure and thank you very much for this opportunity to uh, not only talk to you but um, have our listeners participate in this um this journey that I've been on in my life. Very cool. Dr. Furquette, you've been at uh, the universe at NC state for a a long time and um, in the prestige department of poultry science and your role as a professor, um, you have a distinguished professor role. Can you uh, elaborate on that a little bit? Yeah, I'm the William Neal Reynolds distinguished uh, professor of uh, nutrition and biotechnology and uh, Reynolds Coliseum, you know, the historic place where, uh, you know, Jimmy Valvano won the, you know, the NCAA way back in the late 80s. OK, that was the famous place. And um, this is a professorship that is the highest rank uh, professorship in the College of Agriculture and Life Science. And there, there's only a few of us um, that's associated with that. And that's based on publication and innovation and a number of other things, teaching and excellence and uh, in a number of, of things like that. Sure. Yeah. And I'm also the uh, director of the Animal Health and Nutrition Consortium at NC State University. And that's a consortium where it allows companies um, who can invest in doing some innovative research. It's more in the area of testing concepts that might eventually um, develop into a potential products. And the industry is also involved as non paid members to. Um, you know, select these kind of nutrition projects as well. So it's a very successful program. Ah, very interesting. And um, I know my um, my knowledge and whenever we're doing, a, you know, any kind of quizzing in, in the sports realm, uh, maybe more recent might be a little bit good, but um, in the more past, not as great um, for trivia. But um, but that, thank you for um, a little bit of background. That's really interesting and, um, you know, really speaks to, you know, kind of set up the stage for the work that we're going to talk about today. Proven on the farm, trusted on the plate, let our technologies help make your production goals a reality. Learn from the experts how carbohydrates can improve nutrient utilization, gut health technologies differ by type, and how liquid smoke can light your bird performance on fire. Carrie isn't just leading in animal agriculture, we're innovating it. Before we get started, a couple things I want to kind of go through of the typical thing that I do. Um, so a couple of this or that questions. So, skydive or scuba? Uh, scuba diving. I, I love doing that. Uh, window or aisle seat? I'm an aisle seat person. Me too. <laughs> uh, fried or grilled chicken? I like fried chicken. <laughs> and then crunchy or soft taco? Crunchy, definitely. <laughs> okay. And then what poultry nutritionist would you take with you in a zombie apocalypse and why? I'd take Vernon Feltz with me. You know, who's the nutritionist uh, for Butterball. Actually, he's now the 
the VP of live production, but um, that guy can get things done uh, and can slay a lot of demons if he needs to. So he'd be a great buddy to come with me. He would be great. I agree. Um, fun personality. And then also I know he's quite good at hunting and a number of yeah. things. So <laughs> that's great. That's great. <laughs> Okay, so let's move back to business a little bit. So um, you've had quite the career so far, and um, you're going to talk, I guess, some of your involvement with the consortium maybe has led into some of this development of this um, research that we're going to talk about today. But we're going to talk about lipid matrix microencapsulation. So can you tell us a little bit about what that is and kind of what got you in this area? Well, uh, lipid matrix microencapsulation is uh, is allowing for certain uh, vitamins and trace minerals and other bioactive compounds, nutraceuticals and things like that, to be embedded within a matrix uh, of, of lipid. And it's usually um, you know, medium chain fatty acids that's uh, hydrogenated. So it, it has a fairly high melting temperature and it allows uh, the the protection of these sensitive ingredients, uh, preventing them from exposure to things that would cause degradation, but also uh, that it allows for um, better handling characteristics, um, improved digestion, um, and it also uh, provides uh, a more nutritional uh, carrier rather than the conventional premixes that are carried on an inexpensive uh, fibrous type carrier or limestone or something like that. And uh, where uh, these compounds like vitamins and minerals can chemically react and cause some degradation problems. So this lipid matrix encapsulation is a, is a novel technology that allows for a, a very well protected uh, nutrients. And that consequently improves stability and a number of other advantages. That's really um, fascinating. And so you kind of recognize this as kind of being an issue um, whenever kind of going into some vitamin shortages, supply and ch supply and demand, um, and, and some of those types of things that started going on in the industry. Is that right? Yeah. You know, I, in my whole career, I've been focusing on feed formulation, ingredient value, digestibility, all of the nutritionist type things we deal with. And one of the things early on in my career, I did some work with stability of vitamins uh, like folic acid and things like that. And we noticed that uh, through my classes that I teach, uh, which is vitamin metabolism and mineral metabolism, this is a constant problem is, is making sure that we have these very expensive, high value ingredients maintain their stability. And very often shelf life of conventional vitamin and mineral premixes may only last maybe uh, a month or so, and then you start losing things. So consequently, you have to over fortify these things to compensate for the potential losses. And so that was this research was like a combination of all of these problems and finding a way to meet that need. So uh, that that's one of the things that we were very focused on um, by enhancing the, the stability of these uh, nutrients. And so how does... How does this um, encapsulation technology help to protect vitamins and minerals and, and, and also improve maybe their bioavailability or impact the, um, the microbiome within the, the bird? Well, let's first talk about how this technology, it improves the handling characteristics. Um, and so the, you know, that lipid matrix, they're kind of like small little beads, like marbles, right? And so you get really good flowability. And, and the other thing is because it's a lipid, it repels moisture and you need moisture to create um, you know, chemical reactions in it. So in typical premix. And so moisture also causes clumping and all these other kinds of things. So that that matrix allows for a better quality product. And also these little particles, they have a bulk density very similar to what is in the feed mix. So you don't get separation during uh, conveying and, and transport 
that as well. And then the other thing is that, you know, there are factors that impact the stability of these uh, vitamins and minerals. That's moisture, temperature, um, pH, oxygen, light, uh, oxidizing agents, time pressure. And this lipid matrix encapsulation eliminates a lot of these problems with uh, of sensitive ingredients to these factors. And because that lipid matrix repels the moisture, you know, also the heat transfer that happens during pelleting is also uh, reduced so that you these heat sensitive ingredients are not as uh, damaged as as uh, as much as usual. And we've done some tests. We produced our first product about six years ago, and uh, the stability of the vitamins are almost the same as the day we made it. So it's incredibly uh, stable, and that allows you to buy you know, more volume discounts and that's vitamins and minerals mixed together in the same um, ingredients. So uh, in incredibly um, important. Yeah, thanks for backing up onto that because that is a really important um, point to make um, talking about handling characteristics and then the stability of the um, different ingredients that would be provided into a premix. Thanks for joining us today. And um, that's another episode of the Poultry Nutrition Black Belt Podcast. Thanks, Dr. Furquette, for joining us. And we will be talking again soon. Okay, great. Thanks.